Hi guys, we Bob here, and this week I am going to show you how to do a side profile of a head. Um, so let's get on with this. Now this was based on Near Automata. Don't know how you say that. Um, a PlayStation game, and I'm just taking off my headphones so I can hear myself talking. Right, so let's play the video. And so the first method I'm going to show you is the method that I use most of the time. And as you can see, the profile of the face is just coming along and there's not really any guides being used and that's because when I'm drawing a profile I tend to just measure from my eye which is some people's preference other people don't they prefer a kind of method and by this point I have created the side profile of the face and I started in the shoulders so I've just paused it here and the way I do this is I, I tend to have a, a kind of reference photo that I'm looking at and I will start with this brow coming down it coming in at the top and then look at the nose to see how far it comes out from here to here these kind of measurement and then as I say in this one the reference the nose was going down the way and I just I'm really just measuring from what I see on the reference that I have so that is how I tend to do profiles as well um, I say I'm, I'm looking at the distance between this point and this point, the distance between the brow and the eye, and if I just continue on, I literally just do it by using what I see and then correcting if it doesn't look correct. So in this case, her neck didn't look correct to me, and I went ahead and sorted that later on using a kind of cut and paste method. So if I take you over to my other video, I will talk about the, the Loomis method. Okay, so I've brought up a picture of Tomb Raider and I'm going to show you how to get to, to use the Loomis method. So you draw a circle straight away and then you half that circle into. Now the reason I've used an angled line here is that I am looking at the tilt of the head that I'm looking to achieve. Again I would normally do this by eye rather than um, by measuring. And so once you've got your circle you then half the halves so you've half the middle of the circle you half the other halves and that gives you reference point for particular features of the face so i rotated the image around a wee bit because the ear should really fit in that third 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 quarter even and as you can see the top of the ear the bottom of the ear hit that and then we can half it again and you want to draw a circle to the same height as those two lines and join them together I then draw a line down from the middle line down towards the chin area. Now, because I'm using an image, I can use the image as my, my reference here. And then the chin joins up to that middle line. So the chin is here, top of the eyebrow, um, ear fits in here. Um, and this is the chin area. And that gives me, I've got my middle point. So the eye, I've put a half here. And then to find the front of the eye, I've halved it and halved it again, just as a guide. Half it, half it again. It gives me the size of my eye. That's another method you could use. Again, I wouldn't be too prescriptive on these things. I would just see what works for you. I tend to just do it by eye and figure out myself where it's going to be. So I've wrote here it's where the chin is, the ear area, the connection of the jaw to the ear, and then the bottom of the nose and the top of the, the nose, or the top of the brow. Then I put in here my eye guides, and my nose is a kind of triangle that comes out the front. I then want to use my initial image as my reference, eh, rather than the Tomb Raider, and later on I'll show you me using the Tomb Raider reference, but if I fast forward here, I am just looking at the guides I've provided myself, I'm looking at my reference, I'm doing the inward outward idea as I showed you earlier on drawing the chin in drawing where the ear should probably be based on all the guides that I've provided myself you can see the back of the the lip actually goes to this point here whether that's meant or not I don't know it's just why I decided to draw at the time and again like I'm saying this isn't prescriptive this is just to help you do what you want to do with the side profile of the face carrying on so I wanted to see how it looked on top and you can see there is some discrepancy between my drawing and the image. If I was tracing obviously I could trace it if I wanted to. 
you can do that if it helps you. It may help you to get these guides to begin with. Um, once you've had a bit of practice, you usually don't need to do any sort of tracing. Um, I wanted to fix this eyebrow and she also should have some, some lines here to show the anger, which I didn't put into this drawing at the time. So I'm going to move the reference over so that I can see it. Just moving over to the side. I can see it now moving just some of my panels out of the road so I can use it. And then I started to shape the head as i seen it in my reference again. Not really looking at anything other than what I'm measuring with my eyes. The bottom of the nose is a different plane. If you look at a nose, you can see there's this part here, which ties to the top of the lip. There's also this part here, and this is the bottom of the nose. Looks like eh, something disgusting is going on there. But you've got this bottom part of the nose, and you've got the nose here, and you've got the kind of wings of the nose. And you really have to remember this structure. It's the same as here, there's a kind of triangle here, and then this middle part of the head. And I'm going to go on and show you some of that structure as well. So you can see I'm looking at these uh, planes as I would look at them. That's one plane, there's a triangle happens here under the eye. You're looking at how the head is formed and a zero head is what I've mentioned before, which talks about these planes of the face, something that you should check out. And it will help you understand it's the same as the chin, that's kind of a front part of the chin, that's why there's a reflection on it. And the, the chin is shaped it's if you've really got to think in 3D shapes, because it'll help you. And there's a kind of cheekbone here, which you'll see me drawing in various kind of guides for myself, including the highlights to the face. And that was just really to allow me to then colour the drawing appropriately. I'm drawing the ear into that quarter where it, I've said it goes, which is over here. And as you can see, I've kind of got my profile. So for hair, just as an added bonus to this, for hair, I'm looking at the shapes. That's why I've got this shape, the shape here, the shape, the kind of big shapes. I'm not trying to get every, I'm not doing this whole, every single strand thing. Her hair's going this way, so this is what it'll look like. And every strand goes that way, because then you just end up with straw hair. This whole area here is pretty much black. This whole area is here is pretty much black, apart from a few highlights that you can see. And hair doesn't need to be detailed. This whole area here is black. So just as a tip, you're looking at the big segments of the hair to see how you would draw it. And then I was drawing the ponytail area. Just Again, just copying this shape that I've drew here over to here. Again, by eye. And then I've got our ponytail in place. And that's kind of the side profile picture finished. I... Then went on to colour this in, but I'm not going to add that into this video just now. And like I'm saying, really we should have said some angry. Let me just uh, delete those now. Grab that. I should really have had some angriness here. This uh, brow feature coming in, some lines of, of anger. Um, also the bottom of the eye could be a bit more closed to give that more intensity. And you can see the little tiny changes that you make to a facial expression can make all the difference. It's the same as our, our mouth doesn't really go up, it kind of stays down. And that immediately I've, I've added some intensity to that face. Um, she has quite dark kind of areas in, in this area here. This is just going to be shadow, but you can see, as I say, these lines coming down, the kind of scrunchiness in her head gives you that determination or that anger look that she has in the drawing. So we'll carry on. Like I'm saying, really, if I'm doing this, I'm looking at this line here. Let me grab a different colour so you can actually see it. This line here coming down, in, out for the nose, in, out, in, out, shake all about, and it kind of turns into a song. It's it's just looking at all these these wee bits. You can also see on here she's got a kind of her brow goes in a wee bit before you hit the the top plane of the head, which, uh, as you can see, I've added it in here, and that's it. I then, as I say, started using some colouring, but for the moment, that is my tutorial on profile of the face. I'll maybe add a wee bit more tutorials to this series, um, but hopefully it's been of help to you. And 
I hope you are well. And for the moment, we Bob is out. Cheers and bye. <laughs>